Hola. Welcome to episode 27, A Word to Your Mama. Today, we have two amazing folks behind one of my all-time favorite radio shows slash streams, Heartbreak Radio. We have Lady Mish, a.k.a. Soul, a.k.a. Elisa. Those are all the names we use during the episode. She's uh, This is her second time on the, on the podcast. You can check her out um, on episode two, uh, Not Be Productions Light, with our uh, sister, Lilian Rivera. But today she's on with the uh, amazing DJ Fatrick to talk about the origin story behind Heartbreak Monday, a little BTS, a little behind the scenes, how their collaboration works. Uh, we get into, you know, how they contribute and uh, invest in the community and also our great representation Um for everyone to see that they could also do something similar. Uh, I love listening to their show and I say it multiple times and I'll say it again. It's like, especially during the pandemic, it was like a warm hug because it's just a vibe, man. They just like got this vibe down and I learned old and new artists that maybe I, I wasn't knowing and it's just the perfect thing, whether I just need something to chill out to, but I really really listen to their uh, show when I'm working, you know, when I'm in that concept mode. But everyone, you know, listens to it and and deals with it in, in their own way. And also in the episode, we we try to really, or they really try to answer one of the question comments from the audience from Chef Roy Choi. Um, and it's very interesting because uh, – there's a lot of answers to his question, and for sure they'll be in the show notes. Um, all the all the tracks mes- mentioned, um, yeah. And then you know, always you know, stick around afterwards for the supernatural bear, and we'll see if he, you know, answers the call of what's his favorite sad song. So yeah, let's get into it. And also, um. I didn't know that my mic was malfunctioning until about the 14, 15 minute mark. So you'll hear a difference because I was also concerned about I was telling them like, oh, it's heartbreak radio. Like you guys can't come on here and sound have like terrible audio. So like we did this thing where everyone recorded their own audio, blah, blah, blah. So I was like not even checking my equipment. So, yeah, little on my end, their shit sounds great on my end. Psh, Not till like the 15 minute mark. But yeah, amazing episode. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's like get into it. Let's start off by how are you guys doing? How are you guys hanging in? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Okay, I I can start. Um, I... I think the answer is to most folks is just 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 without going into details like we're in the context of the pandemic of mm-hmm. of white nationalist uprising of, yeah. of racist attacks despite mm-hmm. all that as a family we're doing pretty good you know <laughs> in, in the context of that right I mean all those yeah. things affect us and it's just fucked up but we are I, I, I think I am very grateful to have a strong quarantine team. Like the family unit yeah. has been has been uh very supportive and um uh, we've just all grown together to be a stronger family unit throughout this situation. Nice. And Lady Mish over here? Well, I think at the time that we're recording this, um, on top of what Fatty said. I think all three parties on the line are, we're not even vaccinated yet, right? None of us. And um, I've been working this whole time. And although I am a little bit afraid of the vaccine because we don't know so much about it, I, you know, I would, I think we all would have got it if we had access to it, right? Like, um, so that's been, I think, a mental strain, not only for us, but for everyone that's waiting. Um, I work in an industry where I have been working this entire time through the pandemic. So um, having friends like you guys and 
And like what Fatty said, I think it's made uh, my family unit stronger. And my kids are much older. And so we've really had to like work on communication and really trying to keep each other safe, which is hard when everyone in your house is actively working. So uh, my son is, um, a, a, I guess, in food service. He works at a restaurant. And um, so, yeah, I think, you know, we've just mentally become stronger and have come together. And I feel fortunate because I know that's not what everybody's experience of the quarantine has been. And yes. um, I feel really lucky to, you know, even maintain my employment. And to have like the creative space with the both of you and especially like with Fatty and his family, we've, we've gone over, it's been a year now since we've been able to be together in studio and we've been really consistent. Um, we stopped for a while because the, the station itself had shut down too. So I think we all kind of needed a break, but we've been able to recalibrate and it's just amazing to see all the podcasters and all the DJs. And all the people in, you know, in L.A. and, you know, everywhere to kind of try to keep uh, creativity alive and stay connected to our people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And people like you and all other DJs and other creatives, you guys have been our saviors. And I just want to say thank you, because during these crazy ass times, you know, we just wanted what I've said to you, uh, uh, um, Lady Mish, and I've never said to you, Fetra, because we're not close, but hope to be, um, is that your guys' shows are have been w like warm hugs, like tight hugs in, in, in a musical audio format. Nice. You know, you guys are so good selecting what is needed <laughs> to get us all through because it's been a lot of devastation, heartbreak on other, like uh, different types of levels. Do you know what I'm saying? Mourning, grieving on different levels. So gracias, because I know everyone that I know that listens to your show, they feel the same way. I mean, I've tried really hard to put as many people on to you guys um, and they've come back. And some people I didn't even know that I turned them on. I think I've like mentioned it on some of the episodes and they're like, oh, I listened to the show because you mentioned it and I love it. And da, 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 da. So gracias. Right on. Right <laughs> Thank on. You. Thank you. Thank yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, Lady Mish was already on episode two of Word to Your Mama. Now be Productions <laughs> Light with Lilian Rivera. So second time around, but this time because of Heartbreak Radio and DJ Fabtrek first timers. So I wanted to get into, you know, we'll get the backstory and then we'll go into questions from the audience. I got some good ones. Ooh. Oh, wow. Um, and then, but the first question is, before I get to that section, I think it's a question we all have is, this is from The Villainous. Uh, she said, I guess I'm curious how and why they started the heartbreak theme show. It's such a great concept. So let's get into the origin story. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> well, it's a very simple story, which I feel like everyone can relate to. Um, I got my heart broken pretty damn bad. Ooh. And... Um, it came at a time where I had, you know, I got divorced and I was like kind of trying to figure things out. And um, I met someone and it didn't, it didn't work out initially. And I was, I was just really heartbroken. It was too soon. And uh, I just basically started posting. I was on Facebook at the time. I think, I don't know if we're all still on Facebook, but I was on Facebook. <laughs> Guilty. And so I just... I just started uh, posting literally like YouTube videos of sad songs on Monday. And I just started calling it Heartbreak Monday because I was like, Lady Imish. I don't often address myself as Lady Imish. <laughs> but in that moment, I was like, Lady Imish. <laughs> on Mondays, you can be sad. And the rest of the week, you got to get it together. 
And ah. so it was just kind of like a, a really like internal thing. And then because I have like such cool friends and, you know, you have online friends that you actually have never met in real life. Yes. Yes. They big you up all the time. And, yes. Uh, and so people started just it was very organic and spontaneous, like posting songs like on Monday, you know, and we all started tagging each other. And then I had a really unique opportunity. Um, Marco Amador, who is the founder of Radio Sombra, I'm not exactly sure what capacity it exists in now, but um, it was an amazing project and he had wanted um, to launch a series of radio shows. And so he approached me and I was kind of like, no way, there's no way <laughs> I can do this. Um, but at the time, me and Fatty were friends. I mean, we, don't, we didn't have the connection that we obviously have now but I just hit him up and I was like hey like someone approached me Marco approached me with this idea and I'm kind of interested but I'm not capable of doing it on my own like would you be interested and he said yes and has been like really instrumental in the program it's evolved a lot and I've learned so much from him but I just really like it's to his credit to like just I mean it's in Fatty's nature like he has helped so many people. Um, he's a, an amazing DJ and has taught so many people. And, you know, sometimes approaching, uh, like, I don't want to make it about gender, but a lot of DJs are men. And I feel yeah, like that's real. it's not really, I'm not a record collector. I had like zero experience. Like I was like literally choosing things off of YouTube. Um, and he's just really been amazing and has, we've been rocking together ever since does that does that sound correct Patty? yeah i think that that's it uh i yeah i on my end uh it was um I, yeah it, it was it sounded like a fun idea um and i i think at the time i uh you know, it was mostly doing hip hop kind of and soul gigs. I think Motown Mondays might have just started, but I also have a huge love for like kind of like emo, indie rock, that kind of stuff. Um, uh, and I will credit like soul, like soul has put me on to so much good music. So if, if folks don't don't realize this, soul actually picks most of the music, 90, 98% of all the songs. That gets played. No, probably like eighty percent. No, no, because you ve you veto a lot. Well, you pick up my veto. <laughs> 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 um, so I, you know, the the running joke is um, is our age difference, right? Um, we'll just leave it at that. But the joke is like, she's always <laughs> way more on top of like the hot shit that's out right now, like the newest shit. Like, so is the first one in my world to know no, to to uh to uh introduce me to twigs now known as fka twigs um mm -hmm. who else uh kalala i think you were one of the early folks who played who brought kalala to the show and was playing kalala uh i claim kali uchis for sure for sure kali uchi is like you know pre-album days just straight up mixtape days so soul's got amazing taste and just a, as a her ears, her ears are on the streets still. No matter what, she got her ears on the streets, the emo streets. Um, the emo streets, exactly. Um, and you know, I I bring a very type A uh, personality to the show. You know, in terms of like technical stuff, mm. organization. You know, you got the skills. You got the you got the skills. And the first the first rule was to stop ripping stuff off YouTube. <laughs> oh. Yes. So, God, such an elitist. I didn't have money to buy things. Um, but yeah, yeah, and we the other the other kind of recent joke is that we don't even know how old we are. Like we we put out an anniversary show and we got we were off by two years, right? We're actually oh, nine yeah. years old. I heard that you're like, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So it's been a while. It's been nine years. Crazy. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, thank you. Ahead, no, I think we've learned a lot from each other also, like the same way that I've learned a lot from my family, just growing, like it just, just life shit, you know, being an adult, communication, working together. Um, yeah. Awesome. Well, I think also you, you weren't a father when we started the show. I was not. Oh, wow. Came, oh, yeah, that's like, right. 
Yeah, and everyone, like Stowe was like, well, we should probably slow down. Uh, when you when 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 your baby comes, it's gonna be crazy. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's gonna be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I didn't know no shit. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. You guys started, you guys told us how it all started, but how did you and Fat Trick meet? Bamboo. You said you knew it before, but how did that go down? Bamboo Pistola, the rapper, the legend. Oh. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, so I was, um, I grew up in Texas, <laughs> we took it way back. Uh, yeah. I, born and raised in Texas, went to school at Berkeley. What, That's how what, I came what city in Texas? Sugarland, which is like a suburb of Houston. Ah. Sugarland, Texas. To, I used to go to um, New Braunfels, Texas as a kid all the time. Do you okay. know New Braunfels? Yeah, yeah. Schlitterbaum? Yes, yes. <laughs> Tubing on the river? Yes, I do know about that. <laughs> wow. We, we connected in more ways than one. Um, yeah, so I, and I went, to, went to Berkeley. I went to Berkeley, uh, you know, was involved with ethnic studies stuff and hip hop stuff. And and uh, I, I guess the group that Bamboo and Kiwi had, Native Guns, had just formed. And they were performing a lot in uh, at Berkeley. So that's how I met them. Yada, yada, yada. They asked me to, I eventually w became their DJ. And, um, and through that, I just you know, met the community in Los Angeles through Bam and Kiwi, uh, one of them being uh, Soul and Emish Books and Fidel, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. Ah, okay. So that, that's how that's how it got down. Um, okay. So how do you guys go about, so tell us kind of like the BTS. You got next week, boom. Say it's a Monday. Next Monday is going to be, you guys are going <laughs> to record. Who gets the music? Do you guys both pick songs? Who puts them in or like all that? We want to know all that shit. <laughs> I'm laughing because <laughs> it's Sunday, 7.30 p.m. <laughs> That's how far in advance? <laughs> one of us, the day before, the night before, and then one of us sends a text to each other. <laughs> 20 hey, hours what? before we record. <laughs> Do we have a show tomorrow? <laughs> Are we recording tomorrow? Is um, it the second? Second Monday or the third Monday of the month? <laughs> Are you in the mood to do this or not? <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, like I said before, uh, basically, uh, Soul gathers, again, I would say 98% of all the music and sends it to me. And my job is to... <laughs> to veto, I guess, to put my input in, I, which I I, I want to publicly kind of like acknowledge that, uh, that that's a really, uh, I I don't enjoy that role. Well, uh, it's, it's, how do I say this? It's a flexible I, veto. There's yeah, a it's a flexible veto. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> I hate being. I, I I'm the you know folks that don't know me think I'm a hater. I'm just strong. I'm a such. <laughs> I'm a Sagittarius. I'm strongly opinionated, right? Okay. He's um, a Sagittarius and I am a Gemini. So that's that's a lot. That's guys. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah, I I, I will I, I, I give my input, mutual term, on uh, on the choices and sometimes if there's not enough songs or if I feel like there's something missing in, in the vibe, right? Because yeah. the heartbreak theme runs across multiple genres and multiple eras right and that yes i think that one of the strengths of the show is how it encompasses a vibe but not via genre so mm -hmm. we'll play a hip-hop song a joy division song some r&b 90s r&b everything right yeah so sometimes I'll, I'll think if there's something missing in that like in that gamut of like of diversity i would think oh it might this song might be good to kind of help out the whole show um just i mean the selection of the show and your selections um so and then and then i guess uh, then the next part is me having to sequence the the show um mm. the order you know which song to play first second and because lately i've been just i love djing i love like getting on the turntables and mixing and all that a lot of the, a lot of that is based around tempo 
right? But most yeah. of it is just on vibe um, in terms of how we want to start the energy in the beginning, how we want the energy to flow through the middle, and how we want to pick it back up at the end. Nice. Yeah, like a true DJ. Got it. So you have the, the like, you're like, wonder, wonder Twin Powers activate. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, great selection, great curation. And then you take it with your DJ skills, and it is like, let's set the tone of the tempo, like you said. And it works, guys. It fucking works. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Let's get into questions from the audience, shall we? Okay. First. This is someone that I met when I spoke at Wonder Woman Tech. And I, uh, Lady Mish, you know, I've talked to you about her. Um, her name is Miracle. She's a student out in the North Cackalack. And mm. I asked her because she loves the show. She's the one that I sent you the picture where it's her and her, like, uh, dorm mates listening to the show. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. I do. So she was, I was like, so I go, Miracle, y'all, I'm going to have them on. Uh, at the end of the week, like, what sh what question? You have a question or comment or something? She was like, oh, I'm fangirling out so hard, I, I can't even think of a question. <laughs> She's like, but please let them know how awesome they are. Such good, diverse, timeless music. She said she's excited to listen to this episode when it's available. So cool. that's the first little, little first little thing there. Okay. Thank you. Next, we go into a question by Colony Little who is an amazing black freelance arts writer that I had on episode seven of Word to Your Mama. She says, she asks, has either of them jumped on the Twitch DJ trend of broadcasting their mixes? And the second part, how do they each build support their communities in their work, both digitally and locally? Two-parter. Can you repeat the second part again, please? The second part is... How do they each build slash support their communities in their work, both digitally and locally? Got it. Do you want to start, Elisa? Um, I'm sorry. What was the first part of the question? <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys jumped on the on the Twitch DJ oh, bandwagon? That's that's a fatty question. No, we have not. We attempted well, to. We attempted to, <laughs> I, I do have a Twitch under DJ Fatrick, uh, Fatrick with a PH. Um, I, 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 when, when the pandemic first hit, I was doing a lot of IG live DJing and, and a little bit of Twitch. And then also I, I would definitely jump on Twitch because that's what Motown Mondays, uh, yeah. Los Angeles was broadcasting out of. And then 2021 hit. And I just didn't have any energy to DJ until very recently when the sun, when, when the time change happened, it was sunnier yeah. in the evenings. And um, I've been doing this thing from the very beginning of the pandemic where like it's, it's for me, I, folks who Twitch really well, I have a lot of respect for, like they're amazing and they've been doing some amazing stuff that it's, 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 it's become a culture of itself. That's, uh, yes. that's very unique uh within the world of djing and it, it, it's a lot of creativity with your backgrounds with and the look but also i think what's powerful about twitch is the interactions with the chat box the engagement the for engagement sure. yes yeah and i'm not good at that i i already hate being on the mic it's taking me a long <laughs> like if it wasn't for native guns and having to dj on stage with a hip-hop group i would never be touching the mic so <laughs> It's been a long process. Even in the beginning of Heartbreak Radio, if you listen to the first episodes, I never talked. And then <laughs> eventually I would talk, but I wouldn't have my own mic, so you would hear me as an echo in the background laughing or talking <laughs> shit. Heckling, um, heckling me. Heckling. Heckling. <laughs> uh, but now I have a mic and I talk way too much. But You don't talk too much. I I don't like uh, when I DJ I just want to DJ. I don't yeah. um I'm not good at interacting. So I that was one of the main things why I wasn't super on board the Twitch train. Mm -hmm. Um I also just feel I'm not old but I feel I don't have the energy to build another following on another social media platform. Does that, does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yes. I yes, think, it's a lot of work. It, yeah. Yeah, totally. I don't want to make flyers. I don't want to 
post every I don't want to post <laughs> stories every two hours that I'm about to twitch. You know, I'm just yeah. that th that part of my life was I've already been through that. I was really into it when I was throwing parties pre pandemic. And I just that energy, the allocation energy isn't a priority for me anymore. Does that make yeah. sense? Um, totally. Having said that, though, I do have a Twitch and we are DJing. I am twitching every Sunday, which is uh, when I set up, I set up speakers. We have a little like, like a, th a fourplex, fiveplex kind of situation. And I'll set up speakers and spin for my neighbors, which, you know, I spend a lot of labor, to, physical labor, setting up this equipment <laughs> to yeah. spin like an hour. <laughs> but for me, that's a real audience in person, you know, yeah. right, my neighbors feels like something tangible uh, in terms of like providing joy um, and music to then that, that that's a stronger motivation at this point in my life than just a virtual Twitch audience. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I have hella respect and I'm very inspired by folks who are who are twitching a lot um, these days. And I want to say that um Twitch has been a very strong platform for female DJs. Yes. Coming up, right? Um, because they're, you know, it's it's still a very male-dominated DJ world out there. And even mm -hmm. the bookings, the bars, folks who are, like, booking DJs, you know, it was not a very equitable situation. But Twitch has, yep. I think, been a great platform for young of, for a lot of dope-ass DJs to come up. And I'm talking about, like, Spinnerita. Um, yep. You know, Jezebella, who we had on Harbic Radio a couple of years ago. Que madre. They're killing it. Que madre. Like, it's, yeah. They're yeah. doing some amazing things. Shout out to Ladies of Sound. Shout yes. I will, be, yeah. I will be having, um, after you guys, or one or two episodes after you, I'll have Maricel. They put together Ladies of Sound on, uh, also uh, a dilated family crew so yes. she'll be on and we'll talk more about that but yeah for sure i've been seeing the most female djs probably in my life during this pandemic and it's been great also to see like you were talking about earlier the engagement you know like um shout out to my brother from another mother woes and his boom bap kid situation and they oh, had yeah. a lot of you know they had marissa love the name um she has two s's though but like you know them <laughs> and they just were like the engagement of the the chat room the support from other uh women uh, other uh uh, women djs and just other people just being like yo she's dope you know not because of the fact that she's a, a woman, but just because she's dope, you yeah. know what I mean. I, yeah. So I would, that's oh, I'm sorry. That's been great. I would no, go ahead. I would imagine. I haven't been on Twitch, but with everything you guys are sharing, I imagine that Twitch seems like a very safe place for these DJs as well. As you know, not to gender them as women again, but just like you know, the ability to have control of your environment mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. way that you engage with people, I think that it's really allowed. Uh, people to build up their confidence and create like a safe space. And I think for us leading into the second part of the question, um, mm. I think Fatty answered that like he's connecting immediately with his neighborhood, you know, with his immediate yeah. community through his music. And I think for me and the both of us actually being a part of KQBH, is a very big part out. that we are trying to um, contribute to the community and build kind of this space for, you know, by POC DJs um, and investing like in the community. I, I don't, neither one of us lives in Boyle Heights. I used to work there and I'm still a part of the Boyle Heights, Boyle Heights Bridge Runners. But mm. I think um, we were one of the first shows to, to sign on to the station, and I'm so proud to say that I'm a part of it. Um, we, have ama yes. we have amazing programming, a very diverse group of people. And so I think, again, it's all about having the access. Had Marco Amador not invited me to be a part of Radio Sombra, I can tell you Heartbreak Radio would not exist. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's uh, about the examples. Like even you, Ritzy, like you've been a podcaster for how long now? And Who's to say? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in various forms, in various shows.
Staying competitive in these dynamic times means having the right technology at work for your small or medium-sized business. Whether your goal is to grow, downsize, or modernize, Panoply BPO provides the right combination of tools, support, and affordability necessary to make it a reality. Visit panoplybpo.com. That's P-A-N-O-P-L-Y B-P-O dot com to schedule your no obligation consultation today. Mention WTYM and get your 13th month of service for free. Panoplybpo.com. There is a better way. Um, I love the nerd out. I love the nerd out. And uh, the supernatural bear corner. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I think it's just like setting the example that, you know, if I can do it, you can do it. Yeah. Seeing someone that looks like you, you know, seeing them do it you're like oh i could do it and one thing that i do like about twitch is you're saying it's a safe space it's literally you can make your own safe space because if someone's tripping in the chat you can kick them off right (laughs) which is important it's super important and um i talk about all the time but i love listening to there's a lot of people I, i like to 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 check out on twitch but you know at different times of the day and night i'll get an email that kenny beats is doing a Twitch feed and I go on there and I love it. Cause he, he's like, I say he's the Ted Lasso mm. of producers and his, and if you've seen Ted Lasso, you know what I'm talking about. It's like, he's good people. He doesn't allow any negativity. He has moderators that knock you off. So it's definitely a safe, a safe space. Is, and I love that. Is Kenny beats that the trap producer? He does trap and he does other stuff too. Yeah. The younger cat, he, right? The younger white yeah. dude? Okay, mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, yeah, dope. Yeah, he's really awesome and he'll like, he have like amazing beat battles and um, it's just very inclusive, his feed. And like, yeah. you know, I don't know. It, it's just, it's like a hug. And yeah. sometimes he'll create a beat live on Twitch and I'll just be working and I'll That's just dope. hear the loop of, you know, and stuff like that. And I like it because he's always uh educating the young cats especially the young white kids that like he gives homage and respect to those that came before him yeah yeah. so it's it's great okay let's go to this last question before we get into the uh rapid the rapid fire questions the aka slow as hell questions but the last the last question from the audience is a good one okay here we go What's the perfect heartbreak song for tough guys to bump in their car and embrace their sensitivity while still holding their rep? And when I say tough guys, like Raider fan tailgate levels, like what song can they bump that's super emo, but the homies won't trip? Please tell Saul and Fatty I love them both and miss them. This is from our favorite, Chef Roy Choi. Roy. Uh, what's up, Roy? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's hilarious. I mean, that's a funny question because he <laughs> he was a guest on the show. He pick he picked some some choice cuts that I think uh, match those criteria and exceed those criteria in some ways. You know, right? Um, Elisa, the the selector. Uh, oh well. I'm thinking because the Wu Tang made it very grimy. Uh, is um, what's the song that I'm thinking of? I totally blanked out. After laughter. Wendy Renee. Wendy mm-hmm. Renee. I think that's a perfect one. The the Wu flipped it. There is a flipped it, and so I think it embraces you know the the the. After laughter comes tears. So it's like, you know, you're going to laugh with the homies, but you're going to go home and get in your car and cry. Yeah. I um, love it. I, th- this, could, this could be a really deep conversation that can be a whole show and so in terms of how we de- deconstruct masculinity because it, it already exists, right? Like we're talking about low rider oldies. Like that's the first thing that comes to mind. Totally, yeah. But totally, but... On top of like it could be its own show. He also said maybe even make your own playlist 
right? So your own show. But so him and I started kind of talking about it. And I was like, what about all this? He goes, ah, that's too easy. He's like, let's ask the professionals. <laughs> let's think uh, to the professionals. Got you. So I think he's like thinking above and beyond that something like like Lady Mish said. So because I think all these are a given. I think he's right, you know. Um, so what what else were you thinking of? What you got, Freddie? I don't know. I'm I'm such a, a um I'm a Sagittarius. We've already established that. <laughs> so I like to push my opinion on the people sometimes. So I <laughs> my choices would be more like a challenging, like a, a challenge to uh to that box of masculinity, you know, heteronormativity and machismo ness, right? Um mm -hmm. so <laughs> like <laughs> I would tap into like the side of Heartbreak Radio that I even might have to challenge myself on, which is like the stuff that I have to think twice to 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 veto. <laughs> you know, like the FK twigs, ah. the very deep uh, emotional sonic dive, like very almost sonically production wise, and they're very abstract, right? But, um, but has the effect when you listen to it of like, it almost like chakra, right? Like when you go to those, yeah. those sound meditations, some of those productions, like just, just the vibrations of it kind of, it, yeah. it just like physically gets you to emote more. <laughs> like a um, sound bath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, yeah. I, uh, like in a sentimental mood type of song. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You just hear that, that piano and like your heart just like. It's over. It's yeah. over. It's. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe um, um is it a crime by Sade? I mean Oh. Sh that oh, the Raiders dudes are <laughs> definitely rocking to that shit. <laughs> That's on the same level. That's on the same level as oldies, I would think. Right. All right. So so what's something that's that's, that's more advanced? We got it. We we can't we disappoint Roy. It. We can't disappoint Roy. That's such a good question. <laughs> red um, red wine by UB40. <laughs> <laughs> I could see them doing that dance to that I, song. I just imagine all the stuff that um, that Bam would would always look at me sideways for listening to while we're on tour. Um, like oh, what? you know what? Uh, Portishead. Because oh, that's a good one. There's enough hip hop. That's a good one. Right? There's enough hip hop sensibility, but yeah. it's so like it's like heart wrenchy. Some of the emotions. I have a funny story about that. So. I, for a very short portion of my life, I was tour managing, um, not tour managing, I was assistant tour managing Zion and I. And um, mm. I, we were on tour, just, and it was like a, we, we had a, one of those big white vans driving through the Midwest. And we were in Montana in the winter, driving through the mountains, overcast, dreary. And um, we had hired a sound engineer from Atlanta, a mm. young black man super talented kind of came up in the church world but he was just known as like a really good live sound guy and he was and he was super young never heard portis head in his life Whoa. and i was i was selecting the music at the time because i was driving and i was like man it's dreary is mountainy is gray i'm gonna put portis head on Perfect. and he was like yo turn this shit off i'm so sad right now like he wasn't hating <laughs> on it it was just bringing it was it was too much of the same emotions. It was like the emotion of the of the environment, of the weather, <laughs> yeah, added with the yeah. music. And he was like, I need something to balance this, not add to it. <laughs> yeah. He was bombarded by the severity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, lo I love that story because it was, it was it's cool to, it's just dope to introduce new music to people in general and to see their reactions and how it emotionally resonates with people, how it affects them. Um, so yeah, yeah, does that count? Portis has a good That's a, good, a really good uh, one, I think. Question. I think we got the. I get, we got I think, the air I, horns. I think we got the air horn. I think with uh, with all your selections, both of you guys. I think we. I think we got it, and so we'll hear back from him. Um, <laughs> awesome. Okay, are you guys ready for the not so rapid fire questions? The AK hell slow as hell questions. Can you give me two? Give me twenty seconds. Let me get my charger. Hold on. Okay. I also would say it's probably typical, but I want to add, um, how deep is your love by Key Sweat to that list? Okay. <laughs> uh, 
I'll add that. I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put them in the. Sh- I'm gonna say that I put them in the show notes. I'm gonna have links to the all the songs. Oh, nice. That you guys mentioned, so that people are who are not familiar, they can um, check. I love when people, you know, every every episode they talk about their songs because one of the questions is a song question, and I put the links with it. Like, I don't know if I don't know if you guys had a chance to listen to. Oh, well, he doesn't have his headphones on. I don't know when if you get a chance, Elisa, to listen to um, Joseph Jazzbo's episode. That's a good one um, because I don't I like Fela Kuti, but I'm not an expert. I don't, I don't know every single song. Well, they're like 20 minutes long each song. Yeah. So, but, <laughs> it's you know, a time I asked investment. him. Yeah, exactly. So I like the vibe and stuff. So. But when I asked him one of the one of the rapid fire questions, he gave me two examples, and one was, um, I think it was power, power of so- sorrow or something. Oh wow! Okay. And it's he's like it makes it feel like summer, and then I listened to it because I had to put it in the show notes, and I was like, it does feel like summer. <laughs> like mm-hmm. it's such a great song. Okay, so here we go. Let's go. I think I think uh, Lady Miss, you did some of these. Yes, but there's so been you, a couple of you could give them all the fatty. Okay, let's. How, let's so how, do... how do we do this? You're gonna ask a question and then first one answers, or should we take turns no, answering? No, I'll go. I'll go like you. I'll go fat trick you first. She answers some of them, and then uh-huh. I'll, there's a couple of new ones. And I'll let her. Then both of you guys, I'll be like, you go first. Da 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 da. So okay. first one, first couple to fat trick. Three words to describe yourself. Nerd, <laughs> um, <laughs> dad, and uh, third word. I suck at these. Um, <laughs> foodie. Okay, Alisa. I mean, uh, Lady Emish. Did you do this one last time? I did. Okay, uh, fat trick then. What's the best piece of advice you received? Um, I guess relevant to my life now, probably. Uh, well, how do they how do they put it? Um, I, we I was having a conversation with a homie who was very influential, uh, spoken word poet, just a deep thinker, and I, I think I, I didn't take this literally, but he, he says something to the point of maybe the, the most direct and most powerful difference we can make in life is how we raise our children oh yeah for sure um okay i've asked her what about you what are you doing to dismantle the patriarchy um raising my my son and daughter with with uh from from the get uh, breaking down like the gender binary isms and um, focusing on consent mm. and um, and really highlighting achievements of beyond the small list of white men we learn about typically in our past in our in our schools. That nice. Sense? Hell yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hell yeah. Next one. Uh, and I know. Lady Miss, you answered this one, but I think because it's you're on as Heartbreak Radio, people would want to know mm-hmm. uh, on this episode. So we could start with you. Uh, what's the song to get you hype that you when you need it? Um, My Way by Fetty Wap. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I know that that was not your answer in episode two, so that's fantastic. Fucking awesome. <laughs> Just listening to it this morning, actually. Wow. I, I, I love being in a partnership with Elisa on this radio show. It's uh, always surprising me. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> baby, baby. <laughs> okay. That's what hilarious. about you, Fatty? Hilarious. To get me hype. Yeah, to uh, get you hype. You need that extra oomph motivation. Lately? Yes. Uh, and I'm not ashamed to, to admit this. It's Robin. The Swedish singer Robin. Yeah. Uh, my whole family loves uh 
like the her two t- hit singles, uh, "Dancing by Myself" and um, yeah, and "Call Your Girlfriend." Um, <laughs> that or Prince, like one of the Prince dance songs. You nice. know what? You know what? Uh, okay, so I, I I suck at answering these questions, even though I'm a DJ, because it's as DJs we th- we don't think about singular music. We see, kind of like think about context, right? Like yeah, this song in this context would be hella hype, but maybe this song would be better for this context. So like hip hop, Annie up, hands down, no matter of what. Of course. Yeah, easy, right? Of course. Uh, um, Heartbreak Radio, it would be uh, what's it called? Um. It would be uh, the Joy Division song, Love Will Tear Us Apart Again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That kind of be like the anthem. Um, yeah. And then at home, it's Robin <laughs> right now with my kids. <laughs> Which she's, so, she's like, been I, on Like I always radio. do, I have links to all these songs in the show notes. What were you saying, Lady Image? Oh, just that we recently played Robin because I think... It's really helped the Cariaga Huang family during quarantine. Yes. Which is dope. Nice, yes. nice. Yes, yes. Okay. So for for the peoples, let's both have you answer this one. Um, Patrick first. Uh, what will be your legacy? What? What? How is that a quick question? <laughs> I know. That's why. That's why it's called not so not so rapid fire questions, aka the hell the slow as hell questions. <laughs> what will be my legacy? <laughs> um. As Heartbreak Radio, I feel like our legacy is um, is people is a show that I mean, quite literally, uh, or I guess in a one dimensional way, in a superficial way, is is a show with great music across multiple genres and and, and eras that's also uh, mixed well. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a that's a total ego thing. Pat on my, myself on the back. Um, uh, and seek yeah. I I suck at these rapid fire. Um, I I think again like a broken record. I want my legacy just personally, just to I want to be a good father. You know, yeah. I want I want I want to. I I had a great father in certain ways growing up. I also want to break all the things that I felt were damaging about c- certain practices that ge- that generation of immigrant men had and continue on that tradition to be even greater father and so on and so forth, you know, um, yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. Okay, good ones. And uh, Lady Mish? Um, well, I think, I think we spoke about this one. I was lucky to be on here twice. So I think I'm going to reply in terms of uh, the work that we do as Heartbreak Radio. Okay. And I think, um, well, first of all, again, thank you for having us. I want to thank everyone for their super thoughtful questions. I never imagined that people would actually tune into the show. Um, But the thing I like about the show (laughs) is that especially now with social media, um, I haven't been on it as much lately because I go back and forth about it so often, but I feel like it's a gentle kind of reminder to be okay with things being fucked up. And social media can be a valuable tool, but it could also be just like people say this all the time, the highlight reel. You see everybody's Mm -hmm. successes and everybody in their filters. And so I like to think, and I hope it's not too self-serving, that the music we play... And like the nerdy nature of, you know, me and Fatty's friendship kind of pulls it back and is to be like, it's okay to be sensitive. It's okay to yes. be, you know, I don't want to make light of depression because it's a very serious thing, but it's okay to be depressed. And, you know, I always say like, again, you can be sad on Monday, but get it together for the rest of the week get if you together. can, you know, yeah. and, and try to yeah. find that balance. And so if we can comfort people, in some kind of way, I like to think that that's maybe the legacy uh, for the show and that you can bounce back and, yeah. Yeah, I love that. Okay, this is a new question that was just added. This is the first time I'm asking it and adding it to the slow as hell questions. 
Um, it's a WandaVision that came from uh, watching WandaVision. Um, it was from a chat room member on the podcast Fat Man Beyond with Kevin Smith and Mark Bernadine, one of my favorite ones because they nerd out about shows. And someone in the chat said, if you could bring back one person that has passed, who would that be? Who would that person be that you could bring back to just sit and watch TV with? Prince. Boom. <laughs> Quickly. Boom. If it's Lady if, Mish, you know, I think we're excluding. I, I would obviously bring back my my dad, but if we're yes. talking about people that weren't part of our family, Anthony Bourdain. Oh yeah, good one. And what? And yes, I what? am bringing back a white man. That's how serious it is. That's how mm. serious it is. <laughs> mm-hmm. And. Mm-hmm. What is the episode? Because Lady Mish is all up on the episode. Ooh, oh, yes. my goodness. I walked into yes, this one. Yes, please believe it. Let it be known. Look cute. Let it you be know? known. <laughs> please believe it. Let's not be shy. And what, do you remember the, the episode that it was? It's, it was for LA, right? It's the, yeah. I think there's a previous episode. Um, I think the shows are different, right? Because I think I was on No Reservation. Is that what the second show was called? Yeah, I'll no, look you... it up and I'll have a link to your episode. Okay, but... but you have to check it out. It's fantastic, and yeah, I get it. Anthony Bourdain is the real one, and uh, you were, you know, very fortunate enough to to know him, meet him, be on a show with him, and forever be, you know, on film with that. So that's amazing. A little, real quick, a little backstory was that that yes. was possible because of Fatty and Roy initially. And I'm really, oh. I'm really, really sad to say that they originally contacted me because um, they were interested in having Anthony be on Heartbreak Radio. Oh, man. But because um, we were no longer recording in Boyle Heights and we didn't have a studio, they were really, really committed to having a component or representation for Boyle Heights in that show. Wow. And mm. I had tossed it to a few other people Uh, different organizations and they just were really firm about it and I was very very hesitant to do it and I want to thank my friend Roly Rolando and um, Lizette who are a part of the Boyle Heights Bridge Runners and I'm glad that I was it wasn't just about you know me it was about the group and a reflection of the community so it was you know it what could have been but um, I think it was an important Thing, and I'm forever, forever grateful that I got that opportunity. Um, I just regret bigging up Morrissey in that episode. <laughs> 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 Let me clear the record. <laughs> but, Canceled. Yeah, but but shout out to to Anthony Bourdain and all the people that work on that show. He has a really incredible team. Like you know, mm. I think there was a lot of love there, and so shout out to them and shout out to Roy. We should yes. be back on all our shows on on War to Your Mama and to Heartbreak. Yes, what, you guys have to release that episode though, right? Of him on there, Roy. Yeah, Roy on Heartbreak. It it did air. Uh, we have I, I have the show too. I guess it, we can. But you guys haven't put it on Mixcloud. Yeah, yeah, you haven't put it on there yet, right? No. It's it, sadly like like your episode, Ritzy, because you were a guest on our show. Many yes. years ago, and you were a great, <laughs> you were a great guest. Um, but when we transitioned, um, a lot of our shows are kind of scattered over different servers and computers. So one uh-huh. of the goals that we've always had is to kind of like re up on all of that. So hopefully, that's something we can do in the future. Yeah, that would be great. Let let us know so we could spread the word to to listen to um, Roy's episode. I'll be curious and yours and mine. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I just remembered that conversation about Roy on your show. But I don't think it was on air, though. So, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll keep it moving. Okay, so we're at the end, guys. Thank you so much. Tell everybody when, how, where they can listen to the amazing Heartbreak Radio. That's your tagline, Fatty. Go for it. Heartbreak Radio is uh, first and third Mondays. It airs live West Coast time, Pacific Standard Time at 9 p.m. 
on KQBH. And if you're close to the uh, cl- close to Boyle Heights, you can get it on FM 101.5. Um, and if you're not, you can get it on their website, lpfm.la. And if you miss it or you aren't able to listen to it live, then we always have it posted on Mixcloud either the day of uh, or the next day. Our Mixcloud is mixcloud.com slash heartbreakradio. And you could also awesome. follow Fatty at DJ Fatrick on Instagram. And the one for the show is Heartbreak Monday on Instagram. Yeah, it's great. And I, I highly suggest when you go to Mixcloud, you sign up so that you can get the emails because then you'll get the emails to know when they're released. And on top of that, you get a playlist, folks. You get the whole shebang. Oh, yeah, And yeah. I, I've learned some really awesome new artists. So I'll be like, oh, yo. And, and I always text Lady Amisha. I'll be like, yo, that, uh, like the latest one was... Uh, I was a white dude. I remember. I can't remember his the song, but I was like, "Who is that?" I'm obsessed. Um, so it's like just good shit. You could be like, "Oh, who was that song?" They say it in the episode, but you could also look at on the list. And you so, can yeah. also fast forward when we're talking. <laughs> no, but you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. You can get the full, <laughs> full experience. You, you need to listen to the very end because sometimes I'll put like blooper oh. vocals of. <laughs> <laughs> So rude. Uh, uh, <laughs> Sagittarius are so rude. <laughs> there was one time, if you can search back in the archives, there's one time where I caught her singing Prince. Like I turned the mic on right when, <laughs> in the middle of her playing. <laughs> the best. The Why aren't best. you laughing? Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, you're in uh, trouble. I'm in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> but honestly, Ritzy, thank you for having us. I miss you and Patrick and everybody so much. So it's nice to connect in and be a part of your new project again. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you. you so much for, for being on. And, you know, um, I, because of heartbreak radio, that's how I got to meet you, Patrick, for the first time. And I don't know you that well, but, but I, I appreciate you. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> thank you for everything. Um, so yeah, thanks guys. I really appreciate it. Yes, shout Thank out you. to you and shout out to the supernatural bear. I'm trying yes. to I'm trying to get on his on his segment. <laughs> I'll see. I'll, he's pretty he's pretty particular. Let me see if we can make that happen. <laughs> okay, sounds good. I'll wait for my. I'm invitation. excited to hear what he's gonna do for you guys. Yes. Yeah, me too. Maybe <laughs> maybe he could play a sad song for us. What maybe was I the could song? Tell him to put what his was... favorite sad song on. What was the song that we played that he requested? Oh, he, uh, he didn't recently? request it, but we played it for him for Valentine's Day. Was it a Maldita Vecindad song? No. No, it was a Café Tacuba song. Yeah. Oh, Como yeah, yeah. Extraño, yes. Algo así? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Or Quiero Ver. Yes, it. yes. There you go. It yes. was Quiero Ver. Yeah. And he loved it, so thank you so much. I played that section for him, and he was all about it because he loves that song. And uh, he also loves you because you're the one to introduce him to Dragons Love Tacos. The book. Ooh. Oh yeah, classic, classic on these streets. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. Thank you guys. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everybody listening. Have your kids been in a house playing video games in your space way too long? Now you can get them outdoors and still be social while social distancing at the skate side after school and group skateboarding classes. Skate students get to improve their skating and decompress after a long day or week of school. This program is awesome for beginners to get started or advanced skaters to take their skills to the next level. Go to theskateside.com and learn about our COVID-safe programs in Santa Monica, Culver City, Glendale, and South Pasadena. That's T-H-E-S-K-A-T-E-S-I-D-E dot com. The Skate Side. More kids skating. And now, introducing the Supernatural Bear Corner. Supernatural Bear. Hello, 
everyone, this is SNB16, or the SNB. This episode is for Miss Lisa and Mr. DJ Fatrick. That's a cool name, like a really cool name. Um, thank you for giving me a shout out on Valentine's Day. I send thank yous and thank yous and thank yous. Thank yous. And you guys, um, a few days ago, you asked me a question, um, and that was, what is my favorite sad song? The truth is, I don't really have a favorite sad song. Um, I guess Little Brothers, but that's just from Finish and Ferb. So I guess you could say that, but also at the same time, you kind of couldn't either, because it's like having a script, Not it's not... It's not truly, 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 truly made from the heart and um, real experiences. So you could say that's a sad song, but you could also say that it's a semi-sad song because it's not coming from the heart. It's um, an act, an actor reading a script. But I don't really listen to a lot of sad songs because I, I'm a little bit more upbeat. That's just what I prefer. Um, but... Yeah, that's my answer. Don't listen to a lot of sad songs, but maybe a little brother. Yeah, this has been SMB. And thank you to Miss Elisa and Mr. DJ Fatrick for giving me a shout out. Shoopy doo. Wow. Yeah. Heartbreak Radio, folks. Make sure to tune in, listen live if you're in the surrounding areas of Boyle Heights on KQBH or listen um, whenever you want on their mix cloud. And I'll have all those links, especially to everything we talked about, all the songs that they mentioned and on the show notes, which is on the episode page. And we're also going to have a link. I'm also going to have a link to the Anthony Bourdain season nine, episode one, Los Angeles parts unknown that Miss Elisa is in. And they do this running montage of her while Anthony Bourdain is just speaking. It's at night and she's running. And then the rest of the Boyle Heights bridge runners come up. That's how they start the vignette. And it's she looks amazing. She looks gorgeous. And then, you know, they, they start eating tacos and it's fantastic. You have to see it. It's on HBO Max. All the episodes are, but that episode for sure. Um, also, Skate Side, first time on the promo on, on Word to Your Mama. And I want to make sure that you guys understand it is black owned. Coach Lamar and his crew are amazing. Supernatural Bear, when we lived in LA, he did it, loved it. Uh, we still think about Coach Lamar all the time and what he's doing, spreading love, spreading joy with the skating. And it's just, it's good times. Uh, the Supernatural Bear didn't, he didn't want to go the first time. He was a little bit nervous. He had never skated before. And then I only put him in like half a day. And then when I picked him up, he was upset because he was like, he wanted to stay longer. So definitely a, a good space. Um, and I really trust Coach Lamar and his entire staff to keep the kids safe. So yeah, thanks for making it all the way down here. And let's, you know, keep it moving, keep supporting, make sure you leave reviews on the Apple uh, site on the, for Apple Podcasts because that ensures that other people get to find us and listen to the diverse voices that we bring to the table. So yeah, do that. There's also, you could donate. You also buy stuff from the store. Tell your peeps, tell your friends. All right then, we reap. Word to Your Mama is owned and produced by Ritz P. The intro is produced by Nico Beats. And as always, Word to Your Mama is brought to you by RitzyPerryWinka.com and Panoply BPO 